All right, this is the video answer to the question. If I have this set up, we'll take a look at it in just a moment. What would the ARP tables look like on these devices? We have router zero with a serial interface. This is the 10 network here. That's 10.0.0.0. This is gonna be dot 10 over here, and over on this side we have dot one. This fast ethernet interface that goes to the switch, this is the 20.0.0.0 network, and he's gonna be dot one on that side. And the PC, all these ports, all three of them, are assigned to the same VLAN. So on PC0, he's going to be on this 20 network also. He's going to be dot two, and PC1 down here will be dot three. Okay, there is no routing protocols running on router one, but there is a default gateway on router zero. He's been told that if he doesn't know where to send a packet, meaning how to get to the 20 network or anywhere else, he's supposed to forward it over to R1. He has a default route that goes IP route. 0000, zero, zero, zero space 0000, zero, zero, zero. next hop is 10001. So now that this is functional, let's go ahead and take a look at uh, each of the components. We'll verify we can ping from end to end, and then we'll take a look at the ARP tables. So here is router 0. Let's just verify that we can ping. Let's do a show IP route. We'll verify what our routing looks like. We have our default gateway using 10001. We'll verify we can ping him and that works and now we'll verify we can ping the remote network the 20 side so we'll ping to uh, 20.0.0.1 and that's the other side or the other interface of r1 we'll also ping dot two which is the pc at the top right and we'll ping dot three the pc at the bottom right so we've had now full connectivity between all these devices there is really not much more that we could do to generate traffic because it's Everybody, every device has talked to almost every other device. Let's go to the PC. And in the PC, we'll, so this is the PC at the top right, PC0. And let's we'll do a IP config. Take a look at its IP address. It's dot two. Default gateway is 20.0.0.1, which is the router. And let's have them also do another ping of, of 20.0.0.3. And then everybody has talked to everybody. All devices have communicated. Now, what would we expect to see on PC0 if we do, a sh if we do an ARP-A? It's going to have the layer 3 address of the local devices, 20.0.0.1 and 20.0.0.3. 20.0.0.1 is the default gateway, and 20.0.0.3 is PC1 at the bottom right, and the layer 2 addresses for those. How come we don't have the layer 3 to layer 2 mapping for the remote networks? It's because here's what the PC did. This PC right here, it said when we typed in ping or when it responded to 10001, this PC said, is it local or is it remote? Because the first octet is 20 on the local device and the destination we're trying to ping is 10, it's different. As a result, it is going to refer to its default gateway. It'll do an ARP request for the default gateways layer two address, put that in the ARP cache and forward the frame at layer two to the default gateway. Default gateway takes it, looks at the layer three destination, says, oh, I know how to get there, and then it does the repeat processes forwarding it. Because this is a serial link, let's take a look at the configuration on router one. Because it's a serial link, there's no ARP information whatsoever for router zero, because we don't use address resolution protocol inside of uh, serial interfaces. So let's take a look at router one, and bring them over, and we'll do a show ARP show IP ARP and there's our ARP cache so you'll notice all these ARP everything in the ARP cache is related to the Ethernet interface and it says my own MAC address is this first line and then it has the MAC address for the PC in the upper left hand corner upper right hand corner right here it also has the MAC address for the PC at the bottom right hand corner dot three so thanks for the question and that's your video answer have a great day